Hey everybody, good morning. Uh, we're going to be looking at the next chapter of Frindle. We're only going to be reading half of the chapter today. It's a pretty long chapter, uh, but this chapter is called Airwaves. And I think in this chapter we're going to see the effects of that newspaper. We know Judy Morgan put Nick in the newspaper, kind of talked about this whole Frindle situation. And I think today we're going to see uh, what's going to come of that. That's the big cause, and then what's the effect or the effects of all that happening? So let's go ahead and jump in and find out. Within a week, after the article was published in the Westfield Gazette, the kids at the junior high and the kids at the high school stopped using the word pen and just start, started to use the word friendle. They loved it. Nick became sort of a hero for kids all over town, and he quickly learned that being a hero even if you're only a local hero, isn't a free ride. It has a price. People noticed Nick when he walked into his dad's hardware store or when he stood in line at the Penny Pantry to buy a candy bar. He could feel it when someone recognized him. It made him feel kind of shy and awkward. Kids at school started expecting him to be clever and funny all the time. And even for a kid as smart as Nick, that was asking a lot. Every teacher, the office secretary, the principal, even the school nurse, and the custodians all seemed to be watching. Always watching. So we know Nick likes attention, but even for Nick, this is too much. Every kid in elementary, junior high, and high school is looking at him. They want him to be funny all the time. And I don't know about you, but I'm pretty funny, and even for me, being funny all the time is not possible. So for Nick, I know he's having a hard time with that. And then every adult staring at him all the time, too. Ugh. Kind of would make me uncomfortable, too. Let's see what, keeps, uh, what happens next. His parents were great about everything. True, his mom had been upset when the article first came out, and so had his dad. Nick had said... But I didn't do anything wrong, Mom, and neither did that lady from the newspaper. And his parents could see what, that he was right. The things in the article were true, and the truth is the truth, and nothing could be done about it. Even though it made them uncomfortable to have their boy talked about all over town, secretly, Nick's mom and dad were pleased. After all, a brand new world is a pretty amazing, a brand new word, <laughs> is a pretty amazing thing. Their Nicholas was quite a fellow, no getting around it. Someone else in town thought this brand new word was pretty amazing too. Bud Lawrence had lived all his life in Westfield, and when he was only 19 years old, he had saved enough money to make an investment. He looked around for a good idea, and then he bought the first Dairy Queen in the state. After a few years, he bought a McDonald's restaurant. That was almost 30 years ago, and these two restaurants had made him rich. One of Westfield's leading citizens. So we're learning a new character, Bud Lawrence, and we learned about Bud that he has money, and that he also likes to invest his money into new businesses. Hmm, I wonder where this could be going. I wonder what type of new business he could take out of Nick's idea. The idea to call a pin a friendle. Hmm, okay. When Bud Lawrence saw the article about the new word, he had his lawyer file a preliminary trademark claim on the word friendle. Within four days, he had set up a small company that was selling cheap plastic ballpoint pins specially imprinted with the word friendle. He sold 3,000 Frindles the first week, and they sold so fast that stores all over Westfield couldn't keep them in stock. Then just as quickly, kids stopped asking for Frindles. The sales slowed down, and Bud Lawrence started thinking about other projects. Hmm. So he started to make pins with the word Frindle on it, and kids bought them like crazy so fast that stores ran out of them, but then kids seemed to lose interest. I wonder why. Hmm. 
Week later, it was Halloween. The leaves started falling, and it seemed like the town was going to quiet down. And it would have, if it hadn't been for Alice Lunderson. Alice lived in Beverly, a town seven miles away from Westfield, and she worked part-time for the local CBS TV station in Carrington, a town of about 75,500 people. When there were, was important area news, like disasters, like floods or tornadoes, or sometimes if she came across little stories that seemed kind of cute or original, Alice would call the station news manager in Carrington. If it was a good story, or if it was a day when not much else was happening in the world, then the TV station would send out a van with a camera crew to shoot some videotape. Alice subscribed to all the small town newspapers in the area to keep up with local events. Most of them were published on Thursday, and they arrived at her house by Monday or Tuesday. Then it took her all day or so to look through them all. When, uh, when it took her a day or so to look through them all. On Wednesday morning, she finally saw the article in the Westville Gazette about the word war. She read it through twice and looked carefully at the class photograph. She was sure the story was a winner. The TV station manager in Carrington agreed with her. He called CBS station in Boston because sometimes Boston picked up stories from the Carrington newsroom. The woman in Boston thought the story had some real zip to it. So she called the network news editor in New York. So we're seeing a lot of cause and effect here. We are seeing that, um, oh, uh, well, let's start with Judy Morgan. Judy Morgan wrote the newspaper because she wrote the newspaper, Bud uh, Lawrence started to make pens with Frendel on it. Also because she wrote the newspaper, Alice Lunder, what was her name? Alice Lunder, Lunderson. Alice Lunderson took the idea and brought it to her news station in a small town, Carrington. Now sometimes Carrington worked alongside a bigger town, Boston. And sometimes Boston worked alongside an even bigger town or city, in this case, New York. So because Alice took it, now it's going to go from the small town to a big city like Boston to an even bigger city like New York. So in other words, the idea of Frindle and Nick's story is really becoming big news. A lot of people are going to know about it. A lot of people are going to see it. In other words... He might become famous for this. We'll see. When the facts of the Westfield Gazette article got to New York, the staff there loved it too. They looked over the schedule sheet for the week and decided it would be the perfect closing story for the CBS Evening News for the next day, Thursday. Orders flew back through the telephone lines from New York to Boston to Carrington to Beverly. By Wednesday at noon, Alice had a go order to take the story all the way. It was her first piece to get onto the national news, and 20 million viewers would see it. Alice Lunderson and her camera crew stood on Mrs. Granger's front porch Wednesday after school. Mrs. Granger was not impressed at all by the lights and the microphones. She looked right into the camera and said, I have always said the dictionary is the finest tool ever made. By educa uh, for educating young minds, and I still say that. Children need to understand that there are rules about words and language, and that those rules have a history that makes sense. And to pretend that a perfectly good English word can be replaced by a silly made-up word just for the fun of it, well, it is not something I was ready to stand by and watch without a fight. And have you lost this fight, Mrs. Granger? asked the reporter. Mrs. Granger turned her eyes up to nearly full power, and she looked right into the camera with a pale smile and said, It's not over yet. When Alice and the crew showed up at Nick's house, the Allen family was ready for them. Mom and Dad sat on the couch with Nick between them. Nick squinted into the, can uh, into the lights. His mom had worked out with Nick what he could say and what he couldn't say. You remember, young man, she had told him as she combed his hair. These reporters are just looking for a quick story that will make some excitement.
but you have to stay here and live in this town, so you better mind your P's and Q's. As they sat there on the couch, Mrs. Allen had her foot on top of Nick's under the coffee table. And if she pushed down, it meant that the reporter had just asked a question that she was going to answer for him. Mrs. Allen did not trust reporters. So she's trying to protect her son a little bit. She's worried that Nick's going to say something that could maybe upset the people in the town where they live in Westfield. And she's, she's wanting to make sure that that doesn't happen, that Nick's being respectful and that this is a quick, easy little story that goes away fast. So tell me, Nick, why did you make up this new word, Frindle? asked Alice Lunderson. Nick gulped and said, well, my teacher, Mrs. Granger, said that all the words in the dictionary were made up by people and that they mean what they mean because we say they do. So I thought it would be fun to just make up a new word and see if that was true. And were you surprised when Mrs. Granger got mad about that? Asked Alice with a smile. There was a push on Nick's foot. and His mother said, We have never felt that Mrs. Granger got angry. When everyone started using the word friendle, it just got to be a disruption. That's all. She's really a very fine teacher. Yeah, said Nick. I mean, I learned a lot about words, and without her, I wouldn't have. So what's next for you in this new word? Alice was wrapping it up. She could see that Nick and his parents were not going to push anything into the area of controversial. So she just kept it light and happy. Well, said Nick, the funny thing is, even though I invented Frindle, it's not my word anymore. Frindle belongs to everyone now, and I guess everyone will figure out what happens next. Alice also had a short chat with a worried-looking Mrs. Chatham and a smiling Bud Lawrence the maker of the official Frendel pen. Then she shot her opening bit and her closing bit, and the camera crew drove back to Carrington to edit all those pieces, put them together into a two-minute story for the nightly news. The next night, when all the series news, serious news and war, about war and oil prices and world food supplies had been talked about, the anchorman looked into the camera and smiled, and he said, it is believed by many that the word quiz was made up in 1791 by a Dublin theater man manager named Dally. He had bet someone that he could invent a brand new word in the English language, and he chalked up the letters Q-U-I-Z onto every wall and building in town. The next morning, there it was, and within a week, people all over Ireland were wondering what it could mean. And a new word had been created. Quiz is the only word in the English language that was invented by one person for no particular reason. That is, until now. Now there is a new word, friendle. And here is Alice Lunderson in Westfield, New Hampshire with the story. Alice came on the screen with a short introduction. Then right there on TV, Mrs. Granger and Nick and Bud Lawrence and Nick's moms were talking to 20 million people about friendles. And one of those people was producer of The Late Night Show with David Letterman. So we're going to stop there. We have a little bit of chapter left. Uh, it's a very long chapter. But we've seen a lot, and I think we have a lot to think about. We have official Frindles being sold in stores. We have a news piece that was just supposed to be for a small local town, but now is being aired to 20 million people. It's a lot of people learning about Frindles. I'm wondering if that is going to affect Bud Lawrence's business, where he's selling those friendles, now that 20 million new people have learned about that. Um, and the very last thing we learned is that one of the producers of the, the late night show with David Letterman saw this newspaper, uh, this uh, news story. And I'm thinking that means that uh, Nick might go on the show with David Letterman. Now, if you don't know, David Letterman for a long time had a talk show that would go on very late at night and he would bring on guests like Nick and kind of talk to them and ask them questions. And it was a very popular show. So maybe even more than 20 million people could learn about Frindles. So uh, we're going to see what happens next tomorrow. Bye.